Okay, uh, so we're going to sort of uh, move past um, some Halloween decorations um, and go to a different sort of how-to. Um, since I am a costumer and cosplayer, I also tend to make a lot of um, accessories and things. Um, one of the things uh, that I, I have just an absolute passion for is for really nice looking um, toy swords because you can't really, it's, it's oftentimes you can't really walk around in, in public carrying an actual real sword. Um, a lot of swords don't come with scabbards, um, or at least really nice looking scabbards. Uh, so either you, you kind of want to either doctor um, a, an actual holder for your blade. Um, this one I got, I got at Kmart a few years ago and I've, and I've tweaked it a little bit and I've, and I've made it, and I've painted the handle and I have yet to actually rewrap this um, in a little bit of something else, but I'm, I'm going to do that at some point in the future. The problem is I can't, if, if, if I'm walking around as a pirate or um, in my prince costume, I, you really do actually need like a, a, a scabbard for your sword. Um, and one of the easiest ways to make a scabbard is actually to make a wrap scabbard. Um, these, this is actually historical. Uh, wrap scabbards did exist. Um, all they did was they took a sword form, um, a wooden sword form, covered it in lard, and then wrapped fabric around the outside that was soaked in uh, glue. And that was, that was literally what they did to make the scabbard. They just wrapped the outside of the form in glue uh, and, and uh, made a scabbard uh, on, on the sword form. And then when it was dry, they just slid it off of the, of the sword form and then put the, the real sword um, and then just put the real sword in it and then it was done. It didn't really involve a whole lot of handicraft. It was really easy and cheap to do, um, and honestly, that's probably what a lot of more uh, of historical scabbards, unless you had a really important weapon, was was probably made out of. Um, what what I'm going to do is, um, which I've actually already done, is I've taken uh, this is just poster board, um, and I've and I've traced the outline of my sword blade because it's slightly curved. This is actually a. a, a much easier way to to make a scabbard um, for especially for a curved blade because because a straight blade you can literally just take a cardboard tube and just stick the sword in and then just decorate it however you will a curved blade is a little harder so you just what I did was I just took some uh, some poster board and made it oh uh, maybe total a good half inch uh, maybe a centimeter on each side um, wider than the actual blade itself. Um, two sides for each. Uh, I actually have kind of a, a rainbow one here to kind of sort of show the color contrast between it. And then this is this is just regular uh, masking tape. Um, just is just, just to keep it in place so it doesn't move around. I'm not really worried about this sticking to my sword so much um, because the sword is plastic. So whatever glue that I use is just going to kind of slide right off it anyway. So I'm not all that worried, but I'm going to tape this up. So this will actually give my fabric something to adhere to. And then just kind of go all the way around. I'm going to do the top several times just to make sure that it stays. And then just kind of go down the length of the blade, just slowly wrapping it.
As you can see, it's not particularly pretty, but it doesn't have to be because I'm going to be wrapping this in fabric and then after it's dried, um, I will be uh, spray painting the whole thing. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if, it's, if it looks particularly finished. Um, it'll, it'll look better by the time you're done. Uh, because this is, this is cardboard and it will soak up um, some liquid and become really floppy, you're actually going to want to keep your sword inside of the scabbard while you're working on it. Um, otherwise, it might dry flat and then you won't really be able to get your sword in there easily. So it's, it's, it's best if you actually just leave it in there. Uh, this is just landscaping fabric. Um, this happens to be white rather than the traditional black. Uh, black would have been fine too, uh, but white just happened to be what I had on hand because it was used to, I don't quite remember what it was used for. It was used to, I think I got something in the mail with it. And you just kind of, just take your item, and you just kind of slowly wrap it in the fabric. You just kind of pull it taut as you're working with it. Not too taut so that it, it folds in on itself. But you'll just want to keep it keep it taut as you just slowly wrap it. Um, I kind of like how it looks on the end. Um, I could trim it to make to round it off. I think I might. These are some old scissors. They're, they're old sewing scissors that I can't use for sewing anymore because they're just they're just too damn old. And even though I've sharpened them over the years, it just eh. you get, have that happen. You just kind of cut off some smaller strips so you can just make the rounded end. at a time, please. Then, you just sort of keep going back the way you came. Just sort of relayer it over and over and over again. It's actually going to get quite a lot of wear, so it's best to have a nice thick layer on the top anyway. And then, 
actually having that end right at the edge is actually a good thing. It's sort of a natural seam. Now, to ensure that this stays nice and taut, we are going to actually paint this with more wood glue. Get this out of the way. Nice thick coat. don't have a lot of time left on my camera, so I'm going to try and make this as short as possible. Uh, be sure to make, be sure to give some attention to the end, because the end of your scabbard is going to see a lot of wear too. So just make sure this is nice and thick with your glue, because this is going to see a lot of use as well. There we are. All I gotta do is wait for this puppy to dry, and then I can paint it, and I have an actual historical sword scabbard.